Laughter creates laughter. It, it's really true. Faith creates faith. Joy creates joy. Crabbiness creates crabbiness. Yesterday I was, in the morning, I just kind of spent the morning with my youngest daughter, Madison, and we um, just kind of were kicking around the house, and I made breakfast, and, and then we, we watched. Have, have you guys heard this? It's kind of this, uh, kind of a, a thing now, but there's this crazy, it's called Fortnite. Anybody heard of Fortnite, this game? Ryan Jones and myself, that's it. Okay. It's just us kids, I guess, today. So there's this game called Fortnite, and it's just crazy, worldwide crazy, how popular it is. And, and out of this game, there's, there's this guy, his, they, he's called Ninja, and he's one of the best Fortnite players. And so he has like his own little YouTube channel thing where you can go and you can watch, and this is weird, and it's a little bit, I shouldn't even be telling you I did this, but I'm gonna. But you can sit and watch, you can watch him as he plays this game. So you thought it was bad to sit and waste your time playing video games? I spent a significant amount of time watching somebody play video games. And a little side note, it's amazing. It doesn't matter what it is. When you're watching somebody who's really good at what they do, it's fun to watch, isn't it? If it's ice skating, gymnastics, or a kid playing Fortnite. So we watched this guy, and it was amazing how fast he was building the things he was building and, and taking out the zombies and just all of the things he was doing. And, and it's just amazing how good at this game this guy was. And, and so we watched a couple rounds of this, my daughter and I. And after we were done watching it, she was going to play with a couple of her friends because you play with other people like online type thing. So she was going to play with them. And, and before she starts playing, she says, Dad... She's like, I think I can win. And there's no chance of that happening, just so you understand. <laughs> and it's not, I'm not ripping my daughter. It's, just, it's a hard game to play. And so I'm just saying, but, but she went into this game feeling like, I'm not just going to play the game and do well. Dad, I feel like I could win this game. And I'm like, yeah, baby, go. <laughs> and like 30 seconds in, I died. <laughs> because it's a hard game. But here's the point of all this, is, is by her just simply watching that, she saw somebody doing it and doing it well and, and watched their success. Do you know what it created in her? Faith. She felt empowered. She felt enabled. She was, she was going to go in. You guys, faith creates faith. We have faith. We believe that Jesus was born human. We believe that he walked this earth for, for 33-ish years. And then he was crucified brutally. He was buried and he rose again. We believe this. And we believe that through our faith in Jesus, our sins are forgiven. We're washed clean. God only sees us now pure and spotless. And we will spend eternity with him where there is no more crying, there's no more pain, there's no Fortnite. <laughs> we have faith. We believe. But do we share that faith? Last week's message was really just in building a foundation for what we're doing today. And I'm going to tell you what we're doing today or remind you. I'm going to share a little bit. We're going to hear four testimonies. And then, and then I, I would like to pray for you if you would like prayer. Whatever your need is, I would like to pray for you. And we are going to today pray with great faith. With great faith. Because faith creates faith. And we're going to hear testimonies of great faith. Last week, a couple of the scriptures we looked at, we looked at the story of Jesus at the, at the well with this Samaritan woman. And how as he's talking with this woman, it becomes more and more clear to her that this could be the Messiah. She runs back to town saying, you have to come and meet this guy. I met a man who, who knew everything about me. Only God knows everything about us. Amen? Amen? She runs into town saying, I met a man who knows everything about me. Could he be the Messiah? And, and so the people came out to meet him. And having met him and talking to him, then the people said, hey, will you come in? Will you stay with us for a couple, two, three days? He's like, yeah. And so he does. And then through all of this, many, many 
come to faith in him. Many become believers in Jesus because this woman had faith and she went and she told others and then they had faith. Faith creates faith. We read about Jesus. He, he crosses the lake, the Sea of Galilee, and he, he comes ashore and as soon as he comes ashore, out comes these guys possessed by demons. And immediately, and you've got to understand this and, and believe this, immediately with a simple word, he has authority over them. There's no question. And, and, and we know this from what the Bible says is that there were likely thousands of demons present in the possessed. Because they said our name is Legion, for we are many. And a legion is 5,000, so there's likely thousands of demons. Now listen to me, because we have faith today. This is the Jesus that we believe in, the one who stood there and said, with the word, come out. And said, with the word, go to the pigs. With the word, one man, thousands of demons. That's the God that we are coming before today. That's the God who we believe in with one word. So this demoniac, this guy who's set free, he's by Jesus now, and, and he was once naked and completely out of control, and now he's clothed and, and in his right mind, and he's talking, and, and he wants to go with Jesus. I don't know about you, but I don't blame him. <laughs> Jesus just completely transformed this guy, not just his life, but his entire eternity. Completely transformed. And Jesus says, no, you've got to stay here. He says, I want you to stay here, and I want you to go tell everybody what God has done for you. Faith creates faith. Today, what I want to do is I want to invite, I don't even remember who was first, Josiah, come on up here. And, and, and so today what you're going to hear is you're going to hear four different testimonies, just really short snippets of what God has done in four people's lives. And I, I'm hoping that you can relate to one of these in, in some capacity because faith creates faith. So would you welcome Mr. Josiah Pearl? Hi, I'm Josiah Pearl. Um, I got to speak yesterday. Um, there is one thing I kind of thought about. Uh, Tasha, she had brought up Thanksgiving. A year ago, this Thanksgiving, I had a failed to attempt a suicide um, last Thanksgiving. Um, I just didn't want to live anymore. Uh, relationship, family, you know, with the kid and girlfriend that just was not going good. Um, went, put myself into uh, inpatient voluntarily. I only needed to be there for 42 hour hold. Um, I voluntarily went for six days and got out. Things were going good three th months later. Um, she had put a no contact order on me. I didn't get to see my kid for two months. Um, after two months, I got to see my daughter, and my drinking was the two months that I didn't get to see her. It just took a hold of me. I didn't want to live anymore. I tried killing myself with it, and I just didn't want to live. I, had, I was hopeless. Um, so once I finally got to see my daughter, just a light hit me, you know. Um, I went to my dad, he's two weeks recovery, and I said, Dad, I'm not me, I don't love myself anymore, I don't know who I am, I don't want to live, um, I need to be sober, so I went, started going to meetings, I'm four months sober now, um, uh, thank you guys, um, so, yeah, ever since re uh, recovery, you know, um, I just, you know, just started loving myself. So much faith, you know, many, many prayers after prayers answered. Um, one of the big ones is, you know, I, I, God, I, I just want my family back. I want to be back with, you know, my girlfriend and my kid and whatnot, you know. And my last court date because they were trying to charge me with a fifth degree and a fifth degree bodily harm for trying to kill myself. And so um, my last court date, you know, I went in, and long story short to that, the judge was like, so we're just going to, you know, give you, or we're going to drop your charges, give you a year of probation, and, you know, you're going to have to deal with that. Well, 
uh, the prosecutor stood up and she, or he's like, you know, Your Honor, I don't know how to tell you how to explain it, what it is, or I don't know why, but the suspects from Incident Night called and said she wants to drop completely everything. So I got everything dropped, contacted her after I got out of court. We got together, we spent some time together, and we're back together. Um, back in my house, and, you know, it's just amazing what God did for me and helping me in my recovery and uh, just the strength and the power and motivation, everything, you know, it's just amazing. Well, I'm Connie, and I just want to cha- share two incidents when God has healed me since we're believing for healings today in a special way. But when I was four, um, there was a polio epidemic and I had polio and my parents best friends had a daughter my age who also got polio and she has been in a wheelchair every day since she's four years old and I was miraculously healed and I didn't really understand what happened or why but then years later when my dad was critically ill um, I just felt I should ask him what he did when I had polio and he said I can do a darn thing I gave you to God And the Lord spoke to my heart and said, I took him at his word, you're my child. And I just, I just know the presence of God is with me all through my life. But then about um, a month ago, I was planning to go to the mission field for um, a visit, but um, I got sick the week before I was to leave. And the first two days, I just didn't really feel good. But then for three days, I couldn't eat at all. I couldn't keep water down. So I figured, well, tomorrow I'm supposed to go to the mission field. <laughs> so I just said, well, my kids were telling me, I can't go, I can't go. I said, I'm going. If you have to put me on a stretcher, I'm going. <laughs> and so the last day before we left, I just sat down and I just said, Lord, you said lay hands on the sick. These are the only hands here. And I laid them on myself and I just said, and you said, when I don't know how to pray, to pray in the spirit. So I just sat and prayed in tongues for a long time. And I got up and I threw up and threw up and threw up and I was healed. I went to the mission field. (laughs) I had a great time and God is faithful. Um, So thank you. I have had many surgeries in the last five years. It seems like I've had a major surgery every year. I'm a firm believer that God gave man the knowledge in the medical profession, the knowledge that if there's something that needs to be fixed, they can fix it. And I went right with that. This last couple of years, I've had like three different surgeries on my hand. And I'm sure you've seen me in a brace or a cast or something. And this summer, I was in an accident and I broke my wrist. Um, I was in a cast for three weeks, went in to have the cast off. They decided that there was a second break in there and it did not heal good. So I had to go in and have surgery and I had a plate put in my wrist. So then with that plate put in my wrist, I could have the strength to do whatever I wanted to do. So when I went in um, post-op to have that checked, the doctor says to me, well, he said, you've got a lot of nerve compression going on in your thumb area and in your elbow. That's causing some great weakness. They were very concerned about it. They wanted me to do an EMG, an electromyelogram, which is the worst test on earth. They wanted, you know, a pre-op, and then they scheduled me for surgery. And they needed to do it quickly because they didn't know how much damage had already been done. I did not want to have another surgery. I was devastated, terribly devastated. And that Saturday night, during worship, Jerry and I were together back in the back there because we were ushering and and I just I stood there holding my hand and rubbing it and just in tears and just said Lord I don't want to do this again I re- I know they know how to do it and fix it I don't want to do another surgery I was actually starting to feel like a science project so I said I would really like to to not do that I says please help me can you just help me and he said Linda cancel the surgery so Monday morning, I did. I called my doctor. I called the, the, the surgery. I called the, the EMG place. I, I called pre-op. I canceled everything. And it was, it was a wonderful feeling. I just felt I had control. 
and the swelling in my hand that I had was gone. We were together that night, and then going home, I mean, I was just like, ah, the swelling was gone in my hand, and I didn't have that pain. I didn't have that weakness. A week ago, I went into the doctor to get, to have an examination, the, um, the, um, um, therapy, the um, ther physical therapy for my hand, and they did an evaluation. I have complete range of motion in my hand. I am good. God healed me. All right. Hello, everybody. Um, I just want to start by s talking a little bit about my childhood and then take you through my high school and college years. So uh, growing up, I had a really great childhood. My mom has worked at the Forest Lake campus for the past 20 years, so most of the people that work at this church feel a lot like family. And I just, um, the struggle for me didn't really start until the tail end of middle school and then even into high school. Um, my struggle, as I know everyone has a struggle, has always been feeling really alone. I don't know why God has chose this walk for me, but... Um, through high school, I feel like we're all just trying to find our way. We're trying to find our place where we fit in. And so I chose to try to do that by getting involved in sports, specifically softball. Um, but it seemed like the more I tried to fit in with the girls on that team, the less that I did. Other than softball, it, it just we didn't have much more in common. And so by junior year, the feelings of loneliness had grown so intense that um, me and my mom had made a plan to, if it ever got really bad, I should just look into transferring schools for a fresh start. And so on a Friday, we decided to tour Chisago Lakes High School. And during that time, I just asked God, I'm like, Lord, just please tell me if this is the right move. I'm kind of all out of options, and I'm just looking for something. I'm desperate for a change. And so we toured on a Friday, and then um, as we were leaving, my mom just looked over at me, and she's like, honey, we're not thinking anymore about it. We're just going to do it. And so that's what we did. Um, Monday, I started my first day at Chisago Lakes. And with big change comes big fear. And I was definitely afraid over the weekend. I had a lot of thoughts of what if the things that were happening at my old school happen again at this new school. But God didn't take very long to calm those fears because the very first day that I walked into that school, a girl came up to me and she's like, hey, my name's Delaney. And we started talking and she was telling me how she was so excited for these softball tryouts that were coming up. And she encouraged me to try out. So a couple weeks later, I did just that. And there was just a completely night and day difference for the experience that I had at my old school to my new school. I had never felt so embraced by the people that were there, my coaches, my teammates. It was just a completely huge contrast. And um, so I continued to build relationships with my teammates and even met some other friends through classes there at Chisago. And looking back, I just see God so visibly in him showing up when I was obedient to take that huge step of faith by transferring schools. So then after that, graduation came. And again, I was faced with fear of leaving for college, leaving the church that I grew up in and was comfortable with here and knew so many people and my friends that I had made through high school. But come college, I was able to get connected with my college roommate. We went I believe it was within the first couple of weeks of freshman year to an organization called Crew. And through that, I was able to get really close with her because I discovered that she also had a faith. And so we became very close over the next three years. And I also met two other people through Crew. Um, one who became my discipler, which is someone who kind of pushes you in your faith and helps you continue to grow. And then another best friend that eventually became a serious boyfriend. But I don't know why junior years just really aren't my thing because junior year of college, um, I ended up actually breaking up with that boyfriend, um, losing my discipler because she had moved home and then had a falling out with that roommate that I was very close with. And again, those feelings of loneliness came back and they were very intense. And since then, I just want to say that even though I'm, I've been walking with Jesus through this whole time, there are going to be seasons of discouragement, and that was a very tough season. But in that time, I had never felt closer to him because although there's battles of being up and down, I just feel like he shows up in those ever-present moments, and he carries you. And while I, you can look for hope in other places and worth in relationships or how many friends you have, your worth has to be in Jesus, and that is what has been carrying me this entire time. And so even though I'm in the season of waiting and hoping and praying for those relationships that I've wanted for many years, 
he continues to encourage me. And there is a verse and quote that I'd like to share that he has encouraged me with in the last couple months. And the verse is Lamentations 3:25 through 26. And it says, the Lord is good to those whose hope is in him, to the one who seeks him. It is good to wait quietly for the salvation of the Lord. And then this quote is by one of my favorite writers, Morgan Harper Nichols. It says, and for all the mountains that have caught you by surprise, and for the desires of your heart that have taken an unimaginable length of time, even there you are free to hold on to childlike faith. You are being prepared for more, even here, as you wait. Amen. Beautiful. So uh, my prayer is that you can relate to one of these. Because you, we have testimonies of, of somebody, Josiah, going through this difficult time, and, it, and it's so great that just having been able to be a little bit a part of that with him, even in, in the most difficult, even when he couldn't see her, his little girl, he would come in and, and through tears of wanting to see his little girl, there would also be this, but I, I, I don't know why, I, I know God is with me. And there was this great faith that, that surrounded him. And, and he made a statement one time to me, he's like, I, I don't really think it's like that I just believe. He says, it's, it's, like, it's like I'm filled with God. And, and that's a great testimony of, of God's presence, even through those difficult, difficult times. To hear of the physical healings from Connie and from my mom, of, of God touching their bodies. And to hear of a young lady who, she's wanting so badly to, to live her life the right way. And like she said, it's so easy, and so many of us have done this, where we've compromised because of loneliness. We've compromised relationships, we've compromised lifestyle, we've compromised habits because we get lonely, because we get discouraged. And to hear a, a powerful testimony of someone who's, who's, who's even through the difficult times, they've stuck with it. It's not easy. But God is real and God is there even through those difficult times. And you guys, this morning, what we want to do with the rest of our time is we want to pray. I, I want to pray for you. And the heart that, that I think of is the heart of the leper. Because when I think of this leper, I think of this leper coming to Jesus, having seen something, having heard something, witnessed something, and coming with great faith. Because if you think of what it took this leper to come to Jesus, it took great faith. And with an attitude and a heart, a mindset that just said, if you are willing... You can make me clean. And that's, that's such a great heart. It's, it's great faith that says, I know that you can do this if you are willing. And friends, that's the heart that we're going to come before God with today. Is a heart that says, God, without doubt, without question. A heart with great faith, even with great expectation, like Denise said earlier. We're going to come before him saying, if you are willing, you can make me clean. I hope you enjoyed listening to that service. This weekend, I, I really enjoyed our services this weekend. I love hearing testimonies because it, it builds my faith. Faith creates faith. And that's what I think happens when we listen to testimonies. At this point in the service, what we did this weekend was, was I had a, a great privilege I got to pray with all kinds of people at the church here this weekend. I prayed for people to receive healing, physical healing from cancer, people that were having difficulties breathing, that, that God would breathe new breath into them, people looking for direction, people desiring for their marriages to be reconciled and repaired, young people just needing to know that God is with them as they struggle with depression, all different kinds of things. And it was a great time to pray, and, and it was just wonderful because we worshiped the Lord and we prayed. We just sought God for who he is, and, and right now, that's what I want to encourage you to do. I hope in listening to these testimonies and, and these scriptures, I hope right now that your faith is lifted, that the faith of these and that God's hand in their lives has created faith in you. I want to encourage you to do this. If you need prayer, would you stop in and see one of us here at the church, at, at the Chisago Lakes campus or at the Forest Lake campus? 
if you go to a different church and you just happen to be watching one of our messages today, would you go to your church and, and have someone pray for you? Go to a friend, a fellow believer, and just, just be prayed for with great faith. Believe that God is going to be with you in whatever your struggle is, whatever your need is. I love the, the scripture of the leper, and really that's the way we came to the Lord this weekend and the way I would encourage you to go to the Lord. When the leper reached out to Jesus, he came, I believe, with great faith, saying, if you are willing, you can make me clean. The question was never if he was able to. It was his will. As you go before God with whatever your need is, go with that heart, saying, God, I believe. I have no doubt I believe that you are able. And if you are willing, would you make me clean? I hope you have a great rest of your day, and God bless you.